I think the crew of Atticus are having a pretty good time today. Now that is some clear water. Hago lo que pinche quiero. There I am. Okay. Me caga en la puta leche. Yeah, that's Spain though. Here they'd say like, no mames way. Here they would say, f your mother. <laughs> that's true. Come on buddy. Learn about the world a little bit. Yeah, gotta hang out in boat yards more. Yeah, look at that. That's like a little motor sailor uh, fishing boat. Just went right by our stern. That's pretty cool. What do you think, bro? I like sleep. You feel a little more rested? I had another one of those dreams where we found more room on Atticus <laughs> and like we figured out another berth. I was like, oh my god, all this time. <laughs> And then I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty amazing though how like, it just took us like basically an hour to make Atticus really comfortable again. Mm -hmm. So that's a good lesson, you know. We came in and the place was just like a dump. <laughs> and then we open all the hatches, put the winch scoop up, just kind of clean up and get the stuff that's dirty and put it in a bag. and. Mm -hmm. Boom, it's like this really comfortable little home again. So mm. I guess in a lot of ways, that's what a cruising boat is. It's it's two totally different things. Mm. It's like, it's a, a vessel that can get you from like A to B, but then it's also, which is like, has its own needs and requirements. And it's also like a floating home once you get somewhere protected mm -hmm. and you just transition from one to the other. Bad. Yeah. Did you get more wise overnight? Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I noticed. Yeah. Did you get hotter also? No, I've this I'm always this attractive. I think we're both just like high on sleep comfort right now. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up at like six and I was just like, I'm going back in. <laughs> Alright, well, let's uh, make some coffee and breakfast and get underway. Um, and then get back to sleep. So buddy, now that you're well rested and you've slept, do you do you like cruising again? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> we really do need to make a video for me to watch. Being married to you is like being married to that girl from 51st Dates. <laughs> Be like, good morning, Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you feel about your life with me. Yeah. No. Can you explain like why you like it? You know, like w what it is that reminded you of that in the last twelve hours. Um. Yeah. I guess just like having the boat stop and like getting to watch the sunset and like really appreciating just like kind of a bland anchorage. You know, it's not. There's not much to see around here but like it was so awesome that feeling you get of just like relief and like calm and peace and like you feel the boat stop you know it's like makes me really appreciate just like a flat <laughs> a flat boat you know yeah and like the it's a privilege to sleep you know more than two and a half three hours <laughs> and mm -hmm. like a good meal is just like so like inexplainable mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how like comforting it is so yeah I'm just reminded again I guess that I guess it's not all that bad <laughs> <laughs> all right well we're gonna head off that way we're gonna head north to San Pedro and it's gonna be protected sailing buddy you excited about that Got oh it. yes <laughs> it's gonna be a fun-filled day of sailing in flat calm water
and this is just like night and day compared to what we're experiencing out in the Yucatan current. We're making five and a half to six knots. Um, there's probably like, you know, 16 to 18 knots of wind. Got the Audi, the electronic autopilot steering us and uh, it's just calm. Like literally Desiree, I got us underway and Desiree was like, are we underway? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because <laughs> like it's hard to tell, you know? Like it, from down below, she was putting stuff away and whatnot. We're in a kind of a large expanse of like, you know, mod, you know, medium deep water right here. It's about 27 feet, 30 feet. Um, where we're heading is in between two islands up ahead and we have to get into like a narrow little cut. And there's two different narrow cuts that we're gonna have to go through today. So that's kind of gonna be the challenge of the day is We've got a lot of this kind of sailing and then two real narrow um, and shallow little passes to make. Um, but man, this sort of like bay sailing, you know, is supposed to be exactly what Belize is known for. You know, you've got basically a hundred miles of protected water and tons of islands and stuff. So yeah, this is, this is sweet. We're approaching the little cut here that goes in between the two islands and either side is like one feet of water so we gotta be pretty darn careful here you ready bud you feeling ready feeling good let's do it what's our depth uh seven eight All right, so we're pretty much in the middle of the cut right now. Um, I'm up on the bow, and what we found that works really well is I'll be up here with the iPad using Navionics. Desiree is back there at the helm, keeping an eye on the Garmin, and Navionics and Garmin have different charts, so like they both kind of have different information. So with her looking at that and me looking at this, you know, that kind of helps mitigate any sort of error in the chart risk. Um, but you can kind of make out over there, there's some tall stakes right along the edge of the shallows on our port side. And on the starboard side, it looks like the shallows goes a little bit closer to the islands. So this, this pass is a lot narrow or a lot wider than I thought it was. Um, I need to start doing that. I need to actually, like if you look at the Navionics, it kind of looks like it's a narrow pass, but then if you measure it, um, it's like 500 feet wide, you know? So definitely not something that's difficult to do, particularly in the daytime. Now, Desiree and I were just talking, we've got to get a polarized uh, filter for this lens because you, you probably can't see it, but with good polarized glasses, I can see the shallows clear as day. I mean, it's like a, it's like a very fine line going from one to the other. Looks like this is gonna be a relatively easy pass to get through, and uh, I think the next one is a little bit sketchier. Keep a close eye on the depth, and be prepared to turn to the right. Okay. Okay, so right now, what I'm doing is I'm looking at, uh, this is Freya Rauscher's guide to Belize, Mexico, the Caribbean coast. And so this is the next pass that we've got to go through. And she's got waypoints, she's got uh, headings, she's got a description of how to get through here. And that's basically like, we, we do this sort of thing all the time. Like we um, use guides and then you know, as we're, we, I, I read about them before we get there, you know, read about the situation so I have a basic understanding. And then as we're approaching, we're like reading everything. I put the uh, waypoints into Navionics so that as I'm up on the bow, I can kind of A, like guide Desiree via the waypoints, but then also I can be the one that's like citing everything visually so I can tell if the waypoints are wrong. Right, so I'm the one looking at the waypoints. I'm the one 
like deciding if those waypoints look accurate. So you can see that her waypoint is right here. And this is what she says, that marker is the entrance to that's this waypoint, or that's that waypoint right there. So according to her, at that waypoint, you're at the entrance to, to this pass, but according to Navionics, that waypoint is way off in the shallows. And Navionics has all of the stuff that she has. It's got stakes lining the eastern edge of the, of the channel, as well as a big steel pipe. And that's what she's got here, stakes and then a steel pipe. Um, but she's got her waypoint right there at the entrance and Navionics is saying that it's right over there. So this is a really perfect example of like you can't take these waypoints religiously, like you can't take them for 100% accurate and you can't take the charts 100% accurate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for those stakes, I'm gonna look for the pipes, I'm gonna kinda look at the color of the water and compare all of that to um, the waypoints that she's got here. Um, so that's one of the things you gotta do when you're cruising, particularly in like developing countries, is you get a lot of information from a lot of different sources and you can't take any of it uh, you know, as 100% true. You take all that information together and compare it to what you're experiencing there in the moment. So we're making our way through this second cut and it looks like Rauscher is correct. Um, so Navionics was totally off. We've got, we just passed some uh, stakes back that way and we're kind of hugging the shallows over here. There's another stake we're gonna keep to our starboard. Um, and then uh, the, there's kind of like a dog leg in the, in the pass we're gonna turn. But that was a little stressful trying to figure out who was right. These stakes are just sticks, so they're real small. So uh, anyway, so I better get back to navigating, but that was, that was kind of a stressful moment. got through Porto stuck we did not get stuck and uh, now we've got some good sailing ahead of us there's supposed to be pretty much no obstructions between us and uh, and San Pedro we're just about close hauled right now making a good six knots and it's nice and you know smooth and calm and uh, this is fun <laughs> this is very fun we got the sunshade set up this thing and the hard top has really been awesome particularly now that we're in like calm water like now this is just straight up like really fun wonderful sailing you know um this is like just ideal so yeah this trip has definitely had some ups and downs <laughs> and this is this is very high up right now a couple hours of this and then uh, hopefully get to San Pedro by like four or five o'clock, just in time to have a couple beers. Well, so far I think Billy's is pretty awesome. Like inside the reef, it's protected. It's pretty windy, but it feels great because we can be going like six knots and not even feel it. And then it's also fun to just kind of be looking around and watch the different colors of the water change and then see all these little islands and some of them have, you know, like cool structures on them. Others are just desolate. Oh man, so much nicer than being out there. <laughs> A wonderful aid to navigation right there. Man, this is really hard work, bud. Yeah, you look like you're you're really toughing it out. I am struggling. I think the crew of Atticus are having a pretty good time today. Now that is some clear water. We're 
gonna try and anchor in front of town um, and obviously we'll try and look for a sandy patch so since we're not familiar with it might just do a couple you know kind of surveys and try and find a good sandy patch that we like that's in a good spot um, the guidebook says that um, there's a lot of like dive boats and like you know charter boats and stuff that that fly in and out of the anchorage mm -hmm. um, and so we'll just kind of keep an eye out for what their path is and try and stay out of it mm -hmm. all right buddy you ready yes we're gonna go swimming hot yeah there we go san pedro okay stand by to go into neutral okay neutral Give it a little bit of juice forward. Turn right. right. Hard right. Stay neutral. What you doing, bud? Well, I'm trying to figure out where the hell we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know we're in San Pedro, but I mean, just to give you an, an idea, like, I wish I could show you the Garmin next to this, but like, Nothing agrees. Like the Garmin doesn't agree with the Navionics, and and that doesn't really agree with like Rauscher here. Basically, she says like this is great holding right here. This is okay holding. Basically, all of her descriptions of like stuff ashore, like I can't find a single one. So this was this was printed in 2016. That was two years ago. Like, there, there's nothing, like, I'm, I'm looking at all of the names of these buildings and all of the descriptions, mm -hmm. none of it's there. And like, there's a huge bar over there called Palapa Bar and Grill, and it's a huge Palapa. Is it here? No. It Was that built in the last two years? I doubt it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, happens quickly. I guess it's possible. She was saying that basically you want to anchor right in front of Ramon Re, Ramon Reef Resort, but like I cannot. I see all kind. Oh, there's Ramon's village on that boat over there. Okay, so our bearing to that thing is 255. So just south of west would put us like in this area, which actually makes sense. So her anchorage was further south. Yeah, it must have been the grass or the sandy area. All right, well, we decided to stay in this spot and uh, Jordan's gonna uh, dive on the anchor, make sure it looks good. We did power set it at 1800 RPM, so it's probably good, but never hurts to have a second look. Safety is no accident. That's right. Hot Baywatch bodyguard. Does anybody need saving? Yes. Ma'am, are you in need of assistance? All right, ready? Yep. So, how did it look? Well, I'm glad I dove on it because it doesn't look good. No? Great. Yeah, it, it must have dragged out of the sand and it's in like this grass. Oh. And it's just kind of, it's solid like for the moment, but it's precarious. Man. So, and it's real shallow, so we'll probably go further that way. Darn it. Mm, all right, long day. Well, we just re-anchored. Uh, the depth is a lot better. It's about seven feet here, which is better. <laughs> I feel real good about this spot because I dropped it in just like pure white sand, like nothing, no, no grass, nothing. And it's like in the middle of a large sandy area. So hopefully it looks good. Okay, well this is a little nerve-wracking. Jordan just told me to stand by, we might start dragging. Um, I think he must have, must be replacing it, but kind of the good news is now I know what it feels like when we're dragging. And there's a lot of boats that come by here pretty quickly, so this is a really interesting anchorage in that respect. Like, it's not just like a protected harbor or bay, it's just almost like an open channel, you know? Jordan's got me on the edge of my seat here, spending a lot of time out there. The anchor was not set well when I first got there. There's like a, like limestone shelf under like three inches of sand. 
Okay. And so the anchor was just like hooking on to the limestone underneath. So I would just swim around and dig around until I like could actually dig into the sand a little bit. Uh -huh. And I found a spot where it was a little bit deeper and I walked the anchor over <laughs> and then just like shoved it into the sand. What is amazing is how relatively little force there is on the anchor. Because the chain, the friction of the chain, like I literally can just pull the anchor out and like walk around with it and the chain just stays there. Yeah, weird. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's power set it. Okay. Going to 18. All right, we'll call it a day. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of our anchorage? Uh, it's not ideal. And this anchorage is just like a channel with all these boats going by. And after working in Key West on like charter boats, I do not trust charter boat captains. <laughs> so when you were swimming on the anchor, like I was having a little panic attack, you know, just like with the horn. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of wake. Um, the protection's all right. We'll just have to check into the country tomorrow and hope and then go back to key cocker yeah. yeah yeah and then the other thing is like well our first cuba was super safe because you know communism and then uh isla mujeres from from all the cruisers we met they all said this is one of the safest anchorages like they're in the caribbean there's not another anchorage uh, or like place to hang out where you don't lock up your dinghy at night where you don't lock up your dinghy when you go to a dock So I'm just kind of like paranoid now. We're probably not going to be boarded <laughs> I think it happens very rarely and like Atticus is so small that I doubt people really target it, but I'm just probably gonna be a little worried about it tonight Yeah, I hear ya. Yeah Pepper spray <sighs> Nice all right, well, we had a good dinner. Now it's time to go to bed. Time to go to bed. All right, bud. Are you in neutral? No. Why not? I told you neutral. 